let's have a quiz time can you tell me what is the connection between these three pictures let me give you a hint it is related to a person well these three books are authored by kalidas now why all of a sudden are we talking about kalidas so kalidas was a court poet of chandragupta II. now he has written many great poems and stories his poetry gives us an insight of the time of the guptas and helps us understand the height of the cultural development during the age of the guptas his most well known poems are raghuvamsa and meghadutam but he is mostly famous for the fictional love story abhigyana shakuntala a love story between shakuntala and king dushyanta kalidas has inspired many other poets in the world too even our most famous rabindranath tagore was also very inspired by kalidas his work have also been translated into many languages like english danish french german italian let me tell you a very small and interesting story from abhigyana shakuntala so one day shakuntala was lying under the shade of a tree and was lost in the thoughts of king dushyanta the sage durvasa came and was talking to her but shakuntala did not pay attention to him as she was too lost in her thoughts the sage got very angry and cursed that the person she was thinking about will forget her one day when shakuntala came to the court of king dushyanta he failed to recognize her disheartened shakuntala went back to the forest and delivered his child and raised him alone with a lot of efforts now it is said that king dushyanta gave shakuntala a ring as a token of love and one day shakuntala lost this ring as a result of which king dushyanta lost all memories of shakuntala one day this ring was found in the stomach of a fish when the fisherman cut it and the fisherman saw that the ring had the emblem of the king so he hurriedly went to the king as soon as the king saw the ring he remembered everything about shakuntala and went back in search of her wasn't it very interesting now let us see another interesting picture the picture that you see here is from the story the foolish lion and clever rabbit so this story was taken from the collection of stories that is named panchatantra panchatantra was written by vishnu sharma during the age of the guptas and yes it also served as a literary source during the times of the gupta now another remarkable feature that tells us about the cultural development during the time of the guptas was the construction of the temples the temple that you see here is the dashavatara temple at deogar it is built on a raised platform as you can see this platform is raised and measures about 1.5 meter this temple was built in the 6th century ce and the main deity who was worshipped was lord vishnu who is known to be the preserver of the world in hinduism the walls and the railings are adorned by beautiful carvings from the ramayana now the carving that you see here is reclining vishnu this is a beautiful ornate stone work and as you can see there is a serpent known as sheshnag that is coiled under lord vishnu The Guptas were also great patrons of education. This Buddhist monastery which was turned into a university by Kumara Gupta was named the Nalanda University. So this shows how greatly passionate they were towards education. Now this Nalanda University is located in Bihar. Now the story that revolves around Nalanda University is very interesting. Let's have a look at it. not only education but the gupta times also saw the existence of many great learned men like aryabhatta aryabhatta was the most famous scientist of that time 
Now, if he was known to the world earlier, it would have brought Nicholas Copernicus and Ferdinand Magellan to shame. Let us look at some of the great discoveries that Aryabhat made. He wrote a book on astronomy which was named Aryabhatyam and it was written in Sanskrit. He also explained that day and night was a result of the rotation of earth on its axis. He even scientifically explained the reason behind the solar and lunar eclipse. Aryabhat also calculated the value of pi which enabled the calculation of the circumference of a circle. You must have used this symbol so many times but can you imagine this was calculated so long back and is still used today? But one of the major breakthrough that the discovery Aryabhat made was the invention of the symbol of zero. And he used the zero in the decimal system. He taught the world the use of zero and revolutionized the world of mathematics. Can you imagine doing mathematics without any involvement of zero? No. So can you understand what a milestone was achieved? Now, not only in the field of art and architecture and scientific discoveries but in the field of medicine too like Dhanvantri who was one of the Navratnas in the court of Chandragupta too was a noted physician. There was even Shushruta who is known to be the father of surgery. So you see he was the one who started doing surgeries and we use surgeries even today. Now can you tell me who is known as the father of surgery? Was it Kalidas, Dhanvantari or Shushruta? Yes, Shushruta. The science of metal was also known to the Guptas. The pillar that you see here is the iron pillar at Mehroli. And can you imagine this being so old has not rusted even after so many years? Now can you imagine what kind of skills the craftsmen at that time had? Sculpting was also known to the Guptas. The one that you see here is the seated sculpture of Buddha at Sarnath. So the Guptas were even remarkable in the art of sculpting. Not only these but the Guptas were even flourishing in the sector of administration. Like any other empire, the Gupta Empire was also a decentralized one, meaning the king was at the head but the power was divided. Like the king had a council of ministers known as the Sachivas, the commander in chief or the Senapati and Sandhi Bigrahika who were the foreign ministers. Since you already know, the extent of the Gupta Empire was huge. So for efficient administration, the kingdom was divided into provinces or bhuktis which were governed by the Uparika and the Uparikas were in turn assisted by the Kumar Adityas. These provinces were further divided into Vishayas and was headed by Vishayapati and these Vishayas or the district was again divided into villages which was headed by the Gramapati. Now this Gramapati was assisted by the village council much like today's Panchayat. Now you see the Guptas excelled in each and every field like education, art and literature, science, art and architecture and administration as well. So this is one of the times when India prospered culturally and economically. So this is why this age was known as the golden age of India. But like any other empire, the Gupta empire also declined by 550 CE. The primary reason was that the later rulers were not able to keep together the entire kingdom. Skanda Gupta, the son of Kumara Gupta, who was the last ruler of the Gupta dynasty, was inefficient in keeping the entire kingdom together. He couldn't prevent the foreign invasion. 
So as the kingdom was getting weaker and weaker day by day, there was a tribe from Central Asia, White Huns, who invaded the Gupta Empire and slowly the Gupta Empire broke down into small independent kingdoms and such a huge empire withered in the pages of our history. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell.